All right, Jim, let's uh, talk about tonight's chance to see the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights. Uh, we know that a uh, the Space Weather Center has issued a strong magnetic storm watch. What does that mean for us here in the Northwest? What, what that means is there's a potential to be able to see the Northern Lights. And if it holds, if it, it's a, uh, persistent, then we might have an opportunity to see it again tonight. Apparently, there was a very large storm. There are two, two waves to this. We had our first wave already come and gone, and now we have the second wave. If the storm, the timing and the strength and the speed of the storm, and if it's still persistent, we might be able to see it after sunset tonight for the Pacific Northwest. But again, it's peaking now, and is there going to be anything left by the time uh, sunset tonight? That remained to be seen. A lot of the forecast is based on two to three hours um, in advance. So here we are, roughly about early afternoon, and sunset is about 9 p.m. or so. That's, that's a long time. And so the best thing, the best advice, is to check on the KP index. It should be six or seven or eight or nine to be able to stay in the Pacific Northwest. And the good news, too, is that the weather looks good. Uh, it's going to be clear, and those are the two things that come together and make it for a fun viewing of the northern lights. You look towards the north, you see something what appears to be haze or faint light. Some people have not realize they're looking at it and don't see the color. If you have the fancy camera, a smartphone, or a DSLR, and you point in that direction and do a two, three, four, five exposure, second exposure, you're going to get to see some colors. And you're in luck. Uh, so it's very deceiving, but if it gets around to about six, that means it could be over the Canadian border or up in Washington, and we're just seeing the horizon level of the northern lights. If it's seven or eight, we could be very well overhead. So there's an opportunity to see it tonight. Jim, we talk about you know going somewhere dark, somewhere away from city lights. Where is the best place that you would recommend that if we do get that high of a KP index to go see the Northern Lights here around uh, Northwest Oregon, Southwest Washington? Mm -hmm. Well, there's some good spots. And uh, what I recommend, as you mentioned, get away from city light, although we do have a waning gibbous moon. So there's already that that comes into play. That can interfere with some of the fainter auroras, but it's still a nice show. Um, but as you get to the uh, west side, I recommend going in in the North Plains area. Uh, but please be mindful of the traffic, uh, local properties, all of that. And uh, sometimes you can just go to one of the local state parks or local high school. Uh, they can be adequate, but the most important thing is to be able to stop and park safely and to be able to look towards the north. You have to have a good, clear view of the northern horizon. And that is the big factor. So even if you're, it is an open area, if you have trees, building, what have you, um, even some low clouds, you need to have a good, clear view of the north. So North Plains is a good area to go to. Uh, and you can go into as far down as to Forest Grove. Uh, if you go to the east side, they get up in the Sandy area, between Sandy and Mount Hood. Uh, there's some good spots up there. Uh, if you really want to get adventurous, to go up to White River up on Mount Hood. Uh, but that doesn't really have a good northern horizon, but it gives you a good dark skies. So there's a lot of options there. And uh, the main thing is getting a good view of the northern horizon and being safe. Jim, we saw last summer a really, really good run of a few nights of seeing the Northern Lights. It was visible even down here in Portland with the city lights. How strong was that magnetic storm? Uh, it would need to be up in the eight or nine. Uh, that's a really, that's a maximum. Uh, to be able to see that from Portland, you have to have a pretty high scale, but also uh, when you get involved with the city lights, especially, especially nowadays, we have a lot of LED lights, they're putting out a lot of blue. And so that interfered with the camera and made the camera very confused. So I mainly just get away from the city light, um, good dark. If your backyard is dark, you might see it, but it's pretty low. 
Um, and another my another thing to think about. Uh, is this the only opportunity that we're going to have? Absolutely not. Uh, we will have another storm. Think about it. Last year, last May, was a big global wide storm. And then we had it in August and October. Even though we passed the peak, we'll have plenty more in the next month and the next few years. So this is a great opportunity because we have two things, clear weather and a good storm. If somebody has never seen the Northern Lights, what should they expect? They should expect, uh, with the, and one of the first things that they'll, everybody says, that they, I, I went out and looked, I didn't see anything. Um, what you have to really look for, look towards the north, the clear horizon, it appears to be what kind of like a haze or a fog, but it's moving. And then your eye will start, start picking up something. Maybe you might see a color if it's really bright. If you're in a dark location, all the time you get a burst of red or green or some color. And it can last for a few seconds, a few minutes, or hours. And again, it depends on the size of the storm, how long it was, the timing, everything come into play. And once you do see it, you need to sit back and relax and really enjoy the show, share with others, and take a picture if you can, because that's something, it's, it's a memory of a lifetime. All right, Jim, so we need to be somewhere dark, somewhere with possibly a camera that can have a long exposure. Is there anything else that we want to tell our viewers that they need to have when they go out to look for the auroras? Well, the best thing to do is do your homework. You know, if you're going to put all the energy in getting out there and trying to chase the northern lights, do your homework, check the website to make sure that it's actually going to actually happen. Um, and so uh, plan your course and then try to find a good spot. But most of all, look at the website. There's a NOAA website for uh, KP Index, it's called. Or you can go to Solar Ham and go to Space Weather Live. Uh, there's a lot of good resources out there to check your numbers before you go out. And if it's six, seven, eight, you're you're good you're good to go. Uh, but if it starts to uh, fade out, you might as well stay home and wait we'll, 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 we'll for the next one. Jim Todd, my friend, I really appreciate it, and we will uh, chat with you soon. Okay, thank you very much.